I'm Anna Peterson, curator of photographs at the Hocken Collections in Dunedin. Um, I'm one of the three curators uh, that have worked on this show of early New Zealand photography. So this is a portrait of Mary Te Kaihi Karatai, taken at her home where at the end of the Otago Peninsula in 1893 and was taken by William Matthew Hodgkins, who was an interesting man. He was um, president of the Otago Art Society and uh, a member of the Dunedin Photographic Society, so um, a, an amateur photographer, which is one of the reasons why he, this is in the show. Um, it's, it's of interest for a number of reasons too, because William Hodgkins's daughter was Frances Hodgkins, so of course one of our greatest painters, and she painted a portrait after this photograph, so it's um, interesting on a number of levels. Um, but obviously uh, William Hodgkins went out, it was, must have been quite a business to get to the end of the um, peninsula at that time and he's gone out there on an outing with another friend of his, John Halliday Scott, who was uh, another member of the same societies uh, and Dean of the Otago Medical School. What we have here is a, an, a portrait of her mother, of Mary's mother, uh, Mrs Karatai, who was widowed and um, taken by John Halliday Scott on a Kodak number no. one camera because of the circular shape uh, and the dimensions of that circle. Um, the Kodak number no. one camera was um, a handheld camera, so and about the size of a brick, but um, made out of wood. Um, and this particular type of camera, the, the film had to be sent, actually the camera and film and all had to be sent back to Rochester to be developed. And the details of this interior are well worth really studying because it's a very rare glimpse into how a family, Maori family, were living at that time. My name is Sean Higgins, I'm the pictorial curator at Auckland War Memorial Museum and I'm going to introduce you to one of the larger objects in the exhibition. This photographic negative is called a mammoth plate. Mammoth because it's mammoth in size, mammoth in scale and it's the highest megapixel image in modern terms that a photographer could obtain. To take this picture they had to carry a plate this size, which is this size, on horseback or donkey back, all the way up to the location, along with a camera that took this glass plate negative. So the camera is also mammoth, called a mammoth camera, and this camera would have unfolded, been assembled on site, it had a large set of bellows, and the large photographic plate that you see in front of me would have been poured, prepared with pouring the collodion, putting it into silver nitrate, and putting it into the camera. All of this happened with the camera set up ready to take a very large photograph of Te Tarata, the pink and white terraces here, the white terrace, Te Tarata, and a location sadly lost to us in 1886. So why I'm excited about this object is firstly the opportunity to show a negative that saw the light reflected from Te Tarata back into the camera. You're looking at an object that was in front of the pink and white terraces, as I said, no longer with us. You can see in this photograph a large geyser at the top. Um, this is called the cauldron. And it said that photographers, or anyone really venturing up to the cauldron, had to know the timing. Because of course, it's a geyser. It can erupt. But when it doesn't erupt, it's an empty cauldron of silica. And this is the peril of collodion wet plate and even the silver gelatin dry period. These photographers had to carry glass the most fragile, breakable medium. And so there are very few of these negatives that survive. When you print these, you contact print. That means that you take a piece of photographic paper and you put the print directly on it. So what you get, the size that you take, is what you print. 
you're not enlarging these. The only way to enlarge in the 19th century is actually to take a photograph of a photograph, so that you're enlarging by taking a new photograph. The other thing that's really interesting about this um, is, of course, because it's been to the terraces and all of this is made in the field, the photographer has also probably washed this in the geothermal waters trickling down those terraces. And so you've got a little bit of the environment in the physical photograph that's produced. And I think that's fascinating. I'm sure if you did a chemical study of this, you'd probably find sulfur or something that's come from the terrace that would just add to that mystique of this unique object in our exhibition. Kia ora, I'm Natalie Marshall. I'm one of the curators on the show. Uh, from 2011 until early 2023, I was photograph curator at the Alexander Turnbull Library. And it was a great pleasure working with such a large photograph collection of about 5 million photographs that span the early days of photography in New Zealand until 2020s. Um, and covers the whole country, including um, parts of the Pacific and Antarctica. So these two objects are lockets, two matching lockets that um, contain photographs of Heinrich Haast, uh, who was about one year, one year old when these photographs were taken. And it was possibly to commemorate his first birthday. Um, and Julius von Haast is his portrait in one of the lockets, and then his wife, Mary, um, in the other locket. So it looks as though the lockets were made, um, one for each of the Haasts, um, so they each had their spouse and their firstborn child um, in a locket. Uh, one of the lockets um, is in brand new condition, it looks as though it was made yesterday, and the other is quite worn and quite tarnished. Some of the colour has been worn off it. Um, and so I have been trying to find a photograph of Mary Hast to see if I could see her wearing the locket, because we have some other photographs of her taken around this time. This is about May um, 1865 that these photographs were taken. I haven't yet been able to to see that, but it's the one of Julius von Haast and the child that is quite tarnished. So that would have been her locket and quite likely she wore it a lot, whereas Julius obviously did not wear his very much. <laughs> Perhaps not such a, a masculine um, adornment. Um, one of the really interesting things about these photographs, these are albumin prints that have been beautifully hand coloured and because they have been kept in a locket, the colours are still um, quite bright, quite vivid. Um, but one thing that I find really fascinating about these is that we have uh, the original, or well, one of the um, prints from the same negative that uh, these photographs would have been made from which shows Mary with Heinrich sitting on her, on her lap. And in the, the cropped photographs of the child in these two lockets, Mary's shoulder has been turned into the back of a chair um, through a bit of skillful artistry there with hand coloring. So you can see the buttoned back of a chair rather than a cropped shoulder. Of, of the mother holding the child. Um, so it's nice to be able to see those details, to have the fuller image. Um, we don't know who took the photographs, so that's another mystery to be unraveled in the future at some point, hopefully. Um, but just really gorgeous items um, and some of the smallest that we have in the show.